We have our fair share of volcanoes here in California, but they are very different from the types of volcanoes in Hawaii. For decades, California's volcanic fields slept in silence ancient giants buried beneath rolling hills and pine-covered slopes. The state's attention had long since shifted to its famous earthquakes, to the San Andreas Fault, to fires, and droughts. Few ever thought about the quiet volcanoes that dotted the northern half of the state. But early this morning, deep below a forgotten ridge near the town of Bishop, a faint, low rumble rolled through the earth, too soft to be felt, but powerful enough to register on every seismograph within 300 miles. Inside the California Volcano Observatory, Dr. Elena Morris leaned forward at her desk, her eyes locked on the digital waveform. It wasn't just another microquake. This one had rhythm repeating, pulsing, almost breathing. That's not tectonic, she whispered to herself. She knew the difference. Tectonic quakes snapped with sharp jolts, this one rolled in long, low waves. It came from beneath the Long Valley Caldera, a supervolcano that had lain dormant for over 700,000 years. Minutes later, her colleague Dr. Rafi Qureshi hurried into the room, holding a coffee that trembled in his hand. Elena, tell me I'm not seeing what I think I'm seeing. The seismograph spiked again, another deep tremor, slightly stronger. Within moments, alerts began pinging across USGS monitoring systems nationwide. Something was moving deep magma chambers were shifting. The sleeping giant. The Long Valley Caldera, located east of Yosemite National Park, is one of the largest volcanic systems in North America, a 20-mile-wide depression formed by a cataclysmic eruption over half a million years ago. Scientists had long studied it, but its activity had been low for decades. Occasional thermal bursts and gas emissions were common, nothing alarming. But now, readings told a different story. Pressure under the caldera was rising. Gas emissions were fluctuating wildly, and satellite radar showed a faint but measurable uplift. The ground itself was swelling. Dr. Morris immediately called the director's office. Sir, we're detecting sustained harmonic tremor beneath Long Valley, possibly magma movement. How deep? Roughly 8 kilometers. And it's accelerating. The line went silent. Then, the director's voice came back, heavy with disbelief. That system hasn't moved like this since the 1980s. The early signs. Across the nearby region, subtle changes began to appear. At Hot Creek, a popular tourist area known for its steaming pools, park rangers noticed new geysers erupting hotter and louder than usual. The normally turquoise water turned a cloudy gray, filled with fine volcanic ash. Local fishermen along the Owens River started reporting dead trout floating on the surface. The air smelled faintly of sulfur. By noon, the USGS had issued an advisory alert, the lowest level of volcanic warning mostly precautionary. News outlets barely noticed. But deep underground, the pressure was building. Elena's team continued to analyze gas ratios. Carbon dioxide was increasing at a rate they had never seen. Helium-3 levels, a gas that leaks from Earth's mantle, had tripled overnight. That meant one thing, fresh magma was on the move. We need to raise the alert, Elena said firmly. It's too early, her supervisor replied. We don't even know the source chamber yet. We might not have time to find out. The data storm. By 3 p.m., data started flooding in from international monitoring networks. The tremors weren't isolated. Sensors in Oregon, Nevada, and even Idaho were showing sympathetic vibrations, tiny echoes of Long Valley's deep movement. Something about this event felt different. It wasn't just localized pressure, it was a systemic awakening. In a press conference that evening, a calm but cautious USGS spokesperson addressed the public. We have detected increased seismic activity in the Long Valley region. There is no immediate threat to the public. However, our teams are closely monitoring the situation. But as she spoke, in a quiet corner of the lab, Dr. Qureshi was staring at a live feed from the NSAR satellite radar. You need to see this. The image showed a wide patch of California's eastern Sierra swelling like a slow-motion balloon. The uplift had reached 12 centimeters in less than 24 hours. That kind of deformation didn't happen without a massive force below. That's not possible, Elena whispered. It's happening, he said. And it's spreading west. The town's on the edge. By the second night, residents of Mammoth Lakes began to notice something unusual. Dogs barked at invisible tremors. The ground felt alive, vibrating softly even when still. Cell phones buzzed with local alerts about unusual seismic activity. At a nearby gas station, a local man pointed to the horizon, faint red glows shimmered where there should have been darkness. By dawn, the first plume appeared. 
A thin column of steam rose from a hillside near Casa Diablo, one of the region's geothermal plants. Workers evacuated immediately. Elena received the footage an hour later. Steam vents weren't uncommon, but this one was powerful, persistent, and growing hotter every minute. Magma shallowing, she said, her voice tight. At what rate? Too fast. The Global Watch. By day three, scientists from Japan, Iceland, and Italy had joined in remote monitoring. NASA's satellites confirmed surface deformation, and infrared imaging detected expanding thermal zones. The story finally broke across global news. California's sleeping volcano stirring to life. USGS monitoring unusual seismic activity near Mammoth Lakes. Most headlines were cautious, but social media was not. Videos of steam vents, odd clouds, and shaking roads flooded the internet. Conspiracy channels went wild, but amid the noise, one detail stood out a magnetometer in Northern California had recorded an unusual electromagnetic pulse, synchronized with the tremors. It wasn't dangerous, but it was unprecedented. This isn't just geological, Rafi said. Don't start with that, Elena replied. No, listen, this kind of pulse happens when magma's moving fast through crystalline rock. It's frictional charge. Meaning? Meaning the chamber's not only expanding, it's tearing the crust. The red meeting. That evening, in Sacramento, an emergency conference was called between the USGS, Cal OES, and FEMA. Data projected onto the briefing room screen showed a massive red blotch spreading beneath the Sierra Nevada. We're looking at a potential dome inflation event, said Dr. Morris, standing before the group. What's our time window? asked the state director. We don't know. Hours? Days? Maybe weeks? The room went silent. The last eruption from the Long Valley system had blanketed most of North America in ash. It was one of the largest eruptions in human history. The possibility, even a remote one, that it could happen again was enough to trigger national concern. The meeting ended with a decision, elevate the alert to yellow, deploy drones and field teams, and prepare for worst-case scenarios. The calm before the surge. Night fell over the Sierra. Wind howled through the pines. Beneath the ground, the earth moaned deep, rhythmic, primal. Elena sat at her desk, exhaustion written across her face. On her monitor, dozens of real-time graphs glowed, seismic frequencies, gas ratios, thermal maps. All rising. All converging. Then, at exactly 2.37 a.m., every monitor spiked. Sensors from ten different locations lit up simultaneously. The tremor wasn't local anymore, it had reached the surface. She stared at the waveform. It was no longer the soft, breathing pulse from before. It was violent. And then, the feed cut to static.